I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, How Do I Forget About My Ex? I've got an email here from a reader and a viewer, and he says, Hey Corey, I love your advice on how not to give a fuck when it comes to girls. I have more deep-rooted, convoluted, fucked up problem. Here's what it is. I'm 21, and I immigrated from Southeast Asia to the U.S. three years ago with my family. I'm fucking poor, like no financial resources whatsoever, yet I've done very well for myself. I'm going to a great college in Texas literally for free. How nice is that? You can come to this great country and you get all kinds of financial aid and all kinds of fucking give me's, giveaways, and you can go to a great college for pretty much next to nothing. I went to Oxford this past summer and I'm going to St. Andrews next spring. I know that's fucking great, right? You bet your fucking ass, dude. There's a lot of people around the world that would fucking kill to have the opportunity that you have, so you better fucking take advantage of it and stop being a little whiny bitch. It's unbelievable. You're going to school for free and you have all this opportunity. It's like, it's like, dude, you're totally taking life for granted. I was watching a documentary the other night on, on a football player who used to play for the Saints. He was one of the guys that was key in helping them get to the Super Bowl and win it a few years ago. Well, he was diagnosed with ALS about a year and a half ago, and it was amazing. He was totally normal, and he started doing videos for his child because his wife got pregnant at the time. And, with, I mean, literally within six months, he was, like, slurring his speech. He was having a hard time eating. I mean, it's like the guy's totally debilitated, and he can't even move around, and yet he's going to die in a few years, and he knows this. And yet his attitude is that I'm going to live life to the fullest just so I can show people of what they're capable of. And even though I have all these physical disabilities and I had this amazing athletic ability when I was in the NFL just a couple of years ago, I'm going to live my life to the fullest. So you're com completely healthy and you got no fucking reason to bitch and you're going to school for free in the United States, greatest fucking country in the world. You need to quit your fucking whining, dude. He says, well, the thing is I'm depressed, like fucking can't see the good in anything. Perception is reality. You get what you focus on in life. He says, I hate life and I want to die right now, teen angst, on my period, kind of depressed. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I mean, every human being has feelings at one point in their life, especially men. Because as men, we feel that if we're not able to accomplish our, accomplish our purpose, or it seems like our purpose or our goals or our dreams or our desires are so far off in the future, like we'll never get there. You can feel like, what's the point of living? If I can't live out my purpose, then I'm not even a man. And those feelings are natural for a man when he comes up against challenges. But you don't have the kind of fucking challenges that this guy is going to have. I mean, literally in a matter of months, the only way he's going to be able to communicate with the outside world because his brain's going to be totally fine. You know, he's lo basically losing all functioning and control over his body. He has this little thing that's going to sit in front of his eye. And, and how he blinks is how he's going to write and type on it. I mean, you ain't got those kind of fucking problems, dude, and you start appreciation, appreciating the gift that God gave you. He says, my girlfriend broke up with me a couple of days before I was going to leave for Oxford. She dumped me like I didn't matter whatsoever. She told me what a fucked up, narcissistic, manipulative guy that I am. I kept contacting her the month after she told me she is now in a relationship with one of her roommate's cousins, and he is great, mature, and six years older than her. Well, I guess you see the maturity in someone six older, six years older than you, or else he might be using your program. Ha ha. He's, he's, he's a fucking pilot, too, and I'm depressed, fucked up, and my college career is in danger because I've been trying hard to get my girl back. You never try to keep somebody who doesn't want to keep you. And the reason she said you were manipulative is because you, you didn't understand women at the time, and out of your own neediness and your desire to control her, you tried to force her to do things because you can't do that with women. It doesn't work. You'll always get rejected 100% of the time. That's just the way it is. But if now that you've, the good thing is you found my work and if you start applying these things, you'll realize that women will do almost, almost all of the chasing in a relationship and you just have to sit back, relax and respond to her phone calls and texts and when she does reach out to you, you simply make dates to get together beautiful romantic opportunities for sex to happen as I like to call them he says honestly I don't think I love her anymore I just miss her you know like I really miss her like I get it dude I've been there it's like you're only fucking 21 and if you're gonna date and be with women I mean I got my heart broken so many fucking times when I was in my 20s I couldn't count 
I just I couldn't count the number of times that it happened to me. I, my 20s were nothing but fucking heartbreak and disappointment for me. And that's what led me on the journey to learn all this stuff that I'm teaching and pretty much giving away for free in these YouTube videos. And so you've got decades of experience from a guy who went from not having any success with, uh, with women. I mean, you had a girlfriend when you were 21. I didn't even have my first real girlfriend until I was 24. And so you got nothing to fucking whine about, dude. Apply the things that I teach because they will work for you. He says, maybe my little ego is hurt, but I miss her. I texted her last night saying, I can't stop thinking about you. And I was sitting for an hour on the bench outside where we used to sit and I miss you. And then she texts me back saying, there are a million girls out there. Pick one. I'm taken and I'm about to be Jewish. She's changing her religion too. I'm agnostic. I texted back saying, you are the worst person I know. And that was it. She didn't reply anymore. Well, why would she reply to that? She's already moved on. She's with another dude. And you need to do the same thing. You got to realize and, and take ownership for the fact that you completely fucked up your relationship because you didn't know what to do. You didn't know how to interact with women. But that's obviously what led you to my work. And so there's no reason for you to not be applying this stuff and getting results with other women. Because repetition is the mother of skill. And if you're just sitting on the sidelines feeling sorry for yourself, it's ridiculous. The thing is, I have no fucking idea what to do whatsoever. Bullshit. You know exactly what to do. You just rather, you're choosing right now to sit on the sidelines and feel sorry for yourself. He says, I tried flirting with girls, but I have that hurt for my, my relationship that keeps coming back to my mind. It's like when you get burnt, you want to avoid the stove afterwards. Totally understandable, dude. I got burnt really bad, like my ass is on fire, and I'm avoiding girls. But I know that's not how I want to live, and I know that's not me. Yet, the more I push myself to go out and meet new girls in my college, the more depressed I seem to be getting. That's bullshit. Literally to the point of being suicidal where I had to go see a counselor. I'm taking Prozac to deal with my depression, too. Tell me what to do because Prozac sure ain't helping me much except for making me a zombie. How do I manage the pain? How do I forget her? I don't think I want her back. I, I wouldn't be able to respect her and vice versa. I have some pretty awesome looking girls on my radar, but I feel like if I am ask them out, I'll get rejected and I will be crushed. Please help. You're the man. Well, if you got these great, beautiful girls on your radar, you need to go and ask them out. And more than likely, you're probably going to get rejected several times. That's just part of life. At the end of the day, most of the women that you like, they're not going to feel the same way. That's okay. The idea is that you got to apply this stuff because you got to get through the no's to get to the yeses. And as far as Prozac and feeling depressed, I mean, they did. there was a big study. It was all over the news last year that Prozac and all these other antidepressants pretty much have no better effect on people than a placebo does, which is a sugar pill. And that should tell you something. I mean, at the end of the day, taking it's great that you're going to see a counselor because you need to talk about this stuff. Because in order to move past the pain that you feel for the breakup, you got to feel the pain that you feel inside. And going to a counselor will help you get that stuff out. But Prozac is basically something to to create more serotonin in your brain so you feel better. At the end of the day, it's just simply manipulating your body so you don't feel the nasty feelings. But here's the deal. You gotta feel it to heal it. And so once a day, when you get home from your classes or whatever, take the time to cry into your pillow, scream into your pillow, express exactly what you feel, the deep negative emotions instead of avoiding it with drugs or alcohol or that stuff. I'm not telling you, stick with the prescription that your doctor's got you on but you gotta feel the pain. You gotta you gotta get it out because if you just try to ignore it and stuff that down or manage the pain, you're not gonna get anywhere because what you resist will persist. So take the time to cry, even if it takes a whole hour of you just bawling your eyes out like a little child, that's what you have to do. If you watch children and how they express their emotions, they cry and they scream and they stub their knee and then Five minutes later, what are they doing? They're dancing around the house, running around, chasing their brothers and sisters, getting like nothing ever happened. Because they experienced the pain authentically, they moved through it, they felt it, and they moved on. But as we become adults, we're, society teaches us, you know, especially men, that, well, it's not okay to feel our pain and feel our emotion. I'm not telling you to have breakdowns in your classes and you know, cry in the street and all that nonsense. Do it in the privacy of your own home when you're by yourself and you express these feelings and emotions on a daily basis, maybe several times a day when you're alone. Just say it, express the anger, yell it into your pillow as you're holding it up to your face, scream, 
punch your pillow, whatever you got to do and express these emotions because if you do it over and over and over again, what will happen is maybe you do this for an hour, eventually you're going to wear yourself out just like a child does and then you're going to realize, wow, holy shit, I feel better because you express it. But it may come back later that day or later that afternoon. If you do that every single day, eventually over time, that charge will go away and the pain will go away. And in the meantime, you got to get your ass out there and start asking out these beautiful girls using the things that I teach because the stuff works. Some women are going to like you and some aren't. That's just the fucking way it is, dude. And what will happen is when you set a date with a really hot chick and you go out and you have a great time and you make out with her, maybe you hook up with her, you're going to fucking feel right as rain. But apply the stuff that I teach in there and you got to let women come to you at their own pace because if you try to manipulate and control them like you did your last girlfriend, which is simply coming from feelings of neediness, and the feelings of neediness are fear and inadequacy. In other words, you're afraid that deep down you ain't got what it takes to keep a chick. And when you act from a place of need and fear, you're gonna you're coming from a place of scarcity and you're simply gonna fuck things up unnecessarily. So if you have a question or a topic you want me to cover in a future video newsletter, Go to my website, click the Contact Me tab, which is going to be on the left-hand side of your screen. Send me one to two paragraphs max detailing your questions, your situation, your challenges. And you just got to give me several days to get back to you with a response because I get a lot of email from the Internet. And I also get a lot of my paying phone coaching customers. I always got to focus on their emails first. But be patient, and I will get back to you. And if you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get my help is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the Products tab, which is going to be at the top of your screen and just follow the instructions. If you want to get a digital version of my Kindle ebook, which I highly recommend, on my website underneath the email sign up box is a link that will take you to the Amazon Kindle download page for my book. And once you get there, on the right hand side there's going to be a button that will open up a window where you can download a free e-reader app for your Android smartphone, your Android tablet, your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac, or your PC. It only takes a matter of seconds to download and install the app. And after that, only a few more seconds to complete the purchase of my book. You'll be reading it in no time. And I will talk to you soon.